Yeah. Um. So I suppose what I I I like about um, the I, there are there are sort of moments I find even in like actual legitimate horror movies when all of a sudden the reaction veers uh from one to the other or actually even in comedy films i find sometimes you know particularly in sort of outdated uh comedy films where the joke is haha man creepy to woman that it's like oh god like this is not funny this is like or when it's um I think the more interesting one is when it's like comedy and then when it's yeah when it's horror and then all of a sudden it'll turn into like comedy like oh there's there's a scene in Texas Chainsaw Massacre um where the woman's getting picked up by like the man at the the gas station and he's like you know and, and he turns out to be sort of a member of the family and then he starts whacking her with a, like a broom but it's like such a, it's like this straw broom and he just keeps like whacking her with it. But it is still, it's still effective in, it's still played exactly the same. It's still effective in a sort of way. But it's like, there's a sort of primal build up of, of energy. It's like almost the same response uh, from one as uh, the other. And I'm interested in sort of what what do you think is getting built up when that reaction occurs? What what is the gag reflex, as you put it, attempting to dispel? Um, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I can't remember that scene actually. I I just I I was too because it's been a while since I've seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and whenever I think film. about it. Whenever I think about, well, I was just going to say, whenever I think about it, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'm thinking about the dinner scene and just um, everything that's building up to there. So, which is just um, mm. the ending where this woman is screaming, crying, and laughing at the same time as she gets away from Leatherface. Yeah, it's 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 very strange that that is like, it's the same, it's the same impulse comedy tragedy and terror are the same impulse but just channeled differently and i think that's quite I, it reminds me of those there's like a sort of i don't know there's a sort of mechanical um response like i i, I don't know though I, i'm trying to i'm trying to formulate a thought as i'm as i'm expressing it um but I remember hearing that this like this one video about like sitcoms where it says like no one finds the sitcom scenario funny in the sitcom like the world of sitcoms a world's entirely devoid of jokes if someone if someone in i don't know the big bang theory makes a snarky joke they're not making it as a joke they're making it as a, as a sincere attack but it's just like because it's being filtered through the lens of a sitcom that it's that it's funny and like people have shown if you play like episodes of friends or the big bang theory and you remove the laugh track all of a sudden it seems like an incredibly abusive horrible situation if you remove the laughter track from both of those of both friends and the big bang theory there would be no laughs in fact you would not hear one from me because I do not find them funny in the least. I'm no, sorry, I'm I, very I biased about comedy. So yeah, no, I can't. I, I your your taste in humour is very very bleak. <laughs> it's very. Um, I mean, tales from the crypt. I'd say main like. Yeah, that's comedy horror for you. Oh, also <laughs> about um, evoking both terror and the. Um, accidentally, I think that was the line of inquiry you were going with about um, having skitting between the two and not intending to. The John Carpenter's the thing. My dad, I told as um, my dad, he found it funny. He thought it was a comedy, and I was there looking at it, look going. And I was absolutely mesmerised and terrified about people's heads melting off and um, 
people, someone using a man's face as a glove, and these mm. were, and then the, a guy's chest compressing and and turning into a huge mouth and biting this guy's arms off, and there's this huge head on a column, or spinal column that comes out with teeth, and then the guy's head falls off and it turns into a glowing spider, and I'm like, yeah, but for dad. Um... But for my dad, it was too ridiculous to be scary. He just found it hilarious. Yeah, I he mean, was you laughing could probably, all the way. You could probably honestly make that argument that it's like it, you. I mean, I suppose if you if you put like a slide whistle over the the, the uh, scenes of the thing, it would be quite funny. Uh, I mean, I do. I think there was a sort of a, a really quite good comedic timing to the uh, the defibrillator scene where he's like clear, and then as he's getting his hands down, the chest opens up and chomps on the arms. It's there is a sort of um, grotesque humor to it. Uh, it's as I say, th this is what I find interesting because it's like the thing that inspired Clive Barker's Hellraiser was um a, a, a picture D david's leaned in uh, intently interested uh, because I, I hellraiser is one of my favorite all-time horror movies i've even yeah. read the original novella called the hellbound mm. heart <clears throat> so the I'll... thing the thing that inspired that film was a picture i think it was from cambodia um from the killing fields and it was a picture of a woman being burnt alive, um, but she had this sort of rictus grin on her face. And the idea is that, like, th th this sort of th th you reach a point where this sort of pain becomes intermingled with a sort of furious ecstasy, um, and it's like the, um, the there is a sort of point when you go almost beyond the levels of intensity that the human being can can tolerate and what that is i've got a quote Ooh, i've got a go quote ahead. from hellraiser here the centibites gave me an experience beyond limits pain and pleasure indivisible <laughs>